What's going on pickers and grinners? Tom here and today I've got some great lead techniques to help spice up your guitar playing. Make your guitar get some more soul to it. Help you feel the guitar more and get out of some of that pentatonic rut. Instead of that. And these are five essentials. I think any guitar player of any skill level could take advantage of these tricks right now to have a lot more fun playing guitar. So without further ado, let's get started with one of my favorites, starting off in the major key. That means that if you're playing in pentatonic position one, this is gonna be a great one for you. So we'll start in the key of A. Pretty basic, fifth fret pentatonic. But A major is three fret down, three frets down here in the F sharp. So anytime you're in a major key, take advantage of this trick right here. What did I just do? Well, I added a note into that pentatonic scale. This B string, this is a great asset right here. So when you play the pentatonic scale down by the B and E, that's your pattern. But if we throw in this extra note, that's that third fret right here, my second finger. You can pull off on that note down to your first finger. And you have a lot of options. It'll make your playing sound smoother and gives your leads a little more of an emotional feel. Oh yeah. And just right there, instead of playing the normal pentatonic, which sounds like this, might sound great in a major key, but to give it a little bit more of that something something. Hmm, what a difference. You can tell a story with the guitar. So I love using this one in a lot of major solos. You'll see it in more rock guitar solos as well. It's common in that song, Melissa by the Allman Brothers. Another note in the major key that I also love to use. You've got this on the E string here. So these are like brother and sister. Watch this. Doesn't that put a smile around your face? It's a major scale. But when you put these two together, you can create some interesting combinations like that little walk down. And then we can also do things like this. Another song that uses this is the song Dreams by Molly Hatchet. So you're hearing that string of these brothers and sisters right here. Simply a great technique. Now to go along with that, another really cool favorite of mine that can instantly spice up your playing, this one doesn't take a whole lot of effort either, is just adding slides. You saw me do this a little bit here. Now sliding adds a new dimension to your lead, play, lead playing in that it's not so expected or predictable. It might be the same note, like for example. But you hear a smoothness to it. Gives the note a little bit more life. 
Some great examples of sliders. Gary Rosington from Leonard Skinner. You can use that pretty effectively with your guitar playing. Now how do you slide? Well, sliding is a technique I love to use either second or third finger. I love to use third finger a lot because you'll be using this first finger a lot of times when you slide. So that third and second finger, you always want to use the first finger as something to go to your next note. See that right there? So I use my third or second to slide, but first is always available to catch the next note if you wanted to catch the next note. So here's how I combine these two things to slide around. Of course, you could do bigger slides like one in Tuesday's Gone, for example. You got this walk up. Some sick playing by Gary Rossington. One of the kings of classic rock soul guitar. If you haven't heard of Gary Rossington from Leonard Skinner, you need to really give him a good listen because you can pick up so much feel out of his guitar. A big slider. It doesn't matter, minor or major scale, it sounds great. Another technique that I think is essential for any lead player is what I call the hanger. This is where you leave the audience in suspense. It feels like the note is unresolved and it's great for just tricking the audience and letting them hang and drool over the note. Here would be a great example. I used a few in the opening lick I played for you. So something you heard there. That little, it wants, you want it to go back to something. It's got to, it's kind of like you're inserting a comma, but there's no words out there. Or what's coming up? I don't know what to, he finished the sentence with a comma. So then it resolves and the audience is relieved. Oh, thank goodness, that note. I could never end a solo, you could just never end a solo like this. It'd be weird. You can, but it's rare. You know, a lot of times you see these in the middle of the sentence with the lead playing. So these hangers, how do you know which notes hang, which notes don't? Well, it's going to come down to feel knowing your instrument, but I'll get you started with a good example. You don't have to know the exact note. You just have to know at what point in the scale, in the pentatonic scale, where are the hangers in the pentatonic scale? Well, position one has its hanger here. That G string fifth fret. Or wherever, whatever key you're playing in. B, D, so the hang note is always that part of the pattern. Another hanger will be this one. And this is a common one in all lead guitar playing. Billy Gibbons liked to use this one in that one song. I can't remember the name, I'm just guessing there, but. Because you're hearing the hanger, and then it resolves on a note. So your hanger is here. It can even be here on the E string. Now to show you some hangers I like to use, in the sliding scale here, which involves three pentatonic positions, there are three hangers and they're all octaves. So I like to use those hangers whenever I'm playing a lead. But you know the note when you play it, it feels unresolved. That's a really good way to tell if you've got a hanger or not. And you hear some other things, some other good examples of hangers.
I'm just using a few hangers right there. Doesn't that sound cool? As opposed to just playing pentatonic scale. You don't have to be playing lights out fast to do this either. Like you see, I'm playing at a pretty easy paced tempo, blues type tempo. Here's another fun one, soulful bends. Soulful bends. What does that mean? It means that your bend is not an ordinary bend. Where every bend sounds the same. I've played with guys and it's like every bend has, it's, it's almost like we're in a factory that's making bends and the same bend keeps coming out. It's kind of funny to hear the same bend every time, but your ear gets tired of that after a while. So you want to hear something else. Like, okay, there's got to be more in the tank. It's got more to, more to bending than just one type of bend. Well, yeah, you can hear a few different types of bends here. We'll go to the neck pickup. You got the slow type bend. Give it a little, get, like slow down, ease on the brakes. Now here's another example, bending and hitting a note. You bend to pitch and you can do almost anything. Next thing is the bend with vibrato. Give it a little bit of a seizure right there. Let the bend sing. Try and experiment with different bending styles. Maybe you'll invent your own styles of bends. There was something about Leslie West and the way he bends and even talked about how he was different than other guitar players. He's like, yeah, I'm not the fastest guy. I'm paraphrasing. I'm not the fastest guy, but you know when I'm playing. And that really sticks with me. Is, do you want to be a guitarist who blends in with everybody because he's doing all the... All like the shred stuff, but then there's like no break in the action? Or do you want to be somebody who, like him, just remembered for those bends. Like you know that's Leslie West, but versus somebody else who's playing ridiculously fast with no feel. You might not know who they are. They're talented, but there's no soul in that. So spice up your bends a little bit. Now my last trick, for my last trick. Let's see, we got some great tricks here. This is the manual of tricks. Oh, this is big. It's not really a technique, but it's big. Know when to play fast. Sometimes people get the idea of, they just gotta play fast all the time. Okay, faster tempo song, I gotta play fast. Oh, they're always gonna go. You don't have to do that because all I'm hearing there is noise. Like, did you hear that white noise? It was like <laughs> What? Guitar playing is like forming sentences. Also known as phrasing. You might have heard somebody say phrasing. Well, phrasing on an instrument is sentences. So when I play a sentence, I better have an answer to that sentence. Talk, talk. Imagine, this is why guitar players, I think, we're, we're a little weird in a way, is we have conversations with ourselves because we're used to phrasing. And here would be a good example of me having a conversation with myself. Ooh, here's my other person talking. Ooh, he's talking on that side. The other side over here talks. And the other side says. So I'm having a conversation with myself don't report me for hearing voices in my head, but that's really the voices I'm hearing is the phrasing all day long. 
So you're trying to answer. A good answer. Uh, dreams, again, Molly Hatchet. That's one thing talking. Next, talking. Then the other side answers. And this side starts talking. So this is this ongoing conversation, and it might be a lost art in lead playing. I don't know, let me know in the comments below. How's your phrasing? Do you think about it like you have sentences? I think you need to have these conversations with yourself as a guitar player so that when you're playing, your leads get a lot more interesting. Just think about talking. My dad told me this one a long time ago. He said, yeah, you're, just talk to yourself. It was some of the most uh, inspiring lead playing advice I ever got because it's so simple for one, talk to yourself. Okay, it's gotta have an answer. If you're, saying, you're sending it out, it needs an answer to come back. Just have your guitar talk with you in the sense that I'm doing this right now and knowing when to play fast. Well, yeah, you can play fast. But you hear those little there's some hangers in there because it kind of grabs the audience. You don't want to just hear white noise. So try to avoid white noise and your guitar playing is going to sing a lot better. Nothing wrong with playing fast, but playing fast at the right time sounds a whole lot better than just playing white noise. It's impressive to hear all the fast notes for sure, but if you want to really stand out, let your notes breathe on and you'll have a whole lot more fun playing the guitar. Thanks for tuning in today. And if you found this helpful, give it a like, send it to somebody else, help them play better guitar, and I'll see you in a future episode.